Welcome to the introduction for Lab 11, which deals with gene expression. In addition to watching this video, you're going to want to uh, read the lab, lab manual and then also prepare your pre-lab. It's also going to be helpful to look over some of the tables and calculations that you'll be expected to do. We're not going to cover those in the video, but they're in your lab manual. And finally, it might be helpful to bring a laptop or have one of your group members bring a laptop because there's quite a bit of work that you'll be able to do during the lab. So gene expression. We can say that a gene is being expressed when the information in that gene is being transcribed and translated to make a protein. Now this uh, long line here on the diagram represents the DNA of an E. coli cell, a bacteria. And these boxes here are three genes, LACZ, LACY, and LACA, and they have something in common. The products of these genes are enzymes which are involved in the metabolism of a molecule called lactose. It's a sugar molecule that the bacteria can use for energy. All right, now even though there's three genes here, we're really just going to focus on the first one, the LACZ gene. Now we can draw a little symbol here to represent the place where transcription of that gene is going to start. So if this gene gets transcribed, and TS is my abbreviation for transcription, it's going to be transcribed to make an RNA molecule and then translated by a ribosome to make a protein. And the enzyme that is synthesized here is called beta-galactosidase, or beta-gal. And we'll be talking a lot about this, but the LACZ gene encodes the beta-galactosidase enzyme. So there's this other important region of the DNA up here that we'll look at in more detail and this is where the regulatory sequences are. So the questions we'll be asking in lab here, first of all, how do sugars regulate the expression of the LACZ gene? And how do mutations, changes in the DNA, alter the normal regulation? This molecule is lactose. And what it is, is a, a glucose molecule and a galactose molecule held together by a glycosidic bond right here. So, like any sugar, this can be used as an energy source for the bacteria. But there are a couple of uh, rules or guidelines that uh, determine how lactose is used by E. coli. So, first thing to keep in mind is that lactose is not always present. When it is present, it can be used as an energy source, but it's not always present. So, the next consideration is that genes encoding enzymes that metabolize lactose are only needed when lactose is present. For example, the, uh, the LACZ gene that we just talked about, um, it would be a waste of energy to produce those enzymes if there's no lactose around, because their only function is to break down lactose. And the final consideration here is that if both lactose and glucose are present, then it is glucose that is the preferred energy source. So if glucose and lactose are both around, the cell will utilize the glucose rather than starting to create all these new enzymes for metabolizing the lactose.